out to see how part of their Zodiac series. Um, I listened to it for the first time like a couple of weeks ago and um, as I was told before I listened to it, it just kind of sounds like they locked themselves in a studio and just like took heaps of drugs and had a good time. But this is really like quite obscure for them and stuff. Is that what they did to make the I don't think so. Oh, it just right. sounds like that. <laughs> it, I mean, I know the singer um, Damien Abraham is like a... He's, uh, like a pro, pro like medicinal marijuana speaks out about it a lot and stuff so good on him <laughs> this is a cool new release this year that I'm excited to own as well the new Mind Snare record um, it's one, I reckon it's one of their best and I think it's so cool what they did with this record um, they kind of like didn't announce it at all that it's sort of like the day that it came out it was just out. Like the day that they announced it, it was out, so it's just like a pretty cool thing to do. Beyonce. Full Beyonce to, as they say in the industry. Uh, it's got really cool artwork. Yeah. yeah, it's one of my first um, punk albums I bought when I was 14. Incredible material. Yeah, yeah. Um, a friend of mine said, you've got to start with inflammable material with these guys. And um, I don't know, I had a lot to really in line with my kind of like coming, like starting to realize that you cared about the world and why you like punk and like just kind of um, it was cool, really influential for me. Yes. Barbed Wire Love is a great song, it's really, it's really old school. But um, Suspect Device is probably trust. It's pretty, um, pretty influential for me, like lyric wise. I just remember the, the metaphors and not really being able to clearly understand what he was writing about, so you have to like read a bit more. <laughs> and new friends. Shout out. Yeah, Nightbirds. Born to die in Suburbia. This one, record collectors are pretentious assholes. I was talking to uh, the band that we're on tour with at the moment, uh, Nightbirds. And they're all like big Poison Idea fans as well. And apparently the guitarist, Pig Champion, was just like a like a notorious record collector as well. So that's sort of like the, where the idea of this record name came from. Because he's probably a pretentious arsehole. Uh, but can play, can shred. Yeah, Joyce and Oh, this is so good. We were just listening to this in the car. Um, just the soft time. Yeah. Uh, constant headache. So good. Beach community. There's so many good songs on here. But um, <clears throat> I love how they go out of their way to stop shows if people are getting hurt. They they a lot of respect for short people like myself. Wow. <laughs> Allows us to get right up the front. Friends all wrong. I don't think I've ever seen that actually in print <laughs> before because that was before <coughs> my time. But what a fucking album that is, and what a lovely bunch of gentlemen in that band. It says a hundred bucks. You know, rightly so. I've never, actually, I've literally never seen that before. So. You got deep, deep. This is a, a band from Melbourne uh, called Straight Jacket Na Nation. These guys have got to be like one of the like most have one of the most intense and violent live shows I've ever seen. Uh, every, I, every single time I've seen them play, I've just seen so many people leave bleeding and just completely fucked. Uh, this album was recorded at the same studio that we did our last two records at. And um, if you listen to it, it's just like the perfect, perfect production for like a hardcore punk record. It is just insane. And this band is just like out of control. Sleep's Holy Mountain, probably one of the my favorite heavy records ever. Um, saw Sleep for the first time like a few years ago. They came out for the Meredith Music Festival. And, um, oh man, I've never like, first of all, they're just like the super loudest band ever. And second of all, they just like, they would write a set, just, they would start their set and then just play through the whole set, join every single song together and just, I remember they, they, <laughs> they opened with their song Dope Smoker, which is like an hour long song. Didn't play the whole thing. Played all these songs in the middle and then closed with Dex Smoke as well. It's incredible. Just a really, yeah, they love weed as well.
think I was like 15 and I was at some house party out in the middle of nowhere outside of Brisbane and this kid's like, come on, like you gotta hear this band and um, he gave me this like shitty burnt CD of this record, The Day the Country Died and again it was kind of like a one of my first insights into just like political How old were you? 15. So 14, 15 was a bit punky as well. Oh definitely, yep, definitely. But yeah, this is a really, really good album, and it's it, to this day like they're still playing now, and they just have so much energy and there's so much passion in to what they write about. So it's sweet. Yeah, it's awesome. Good find. This is my favorite band in Melbourne. Uh, they're called White Walls. That's an amazing cover. It is super cool. And this band is super awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a burning car. Um, these guys are like like a three piece, uh, sort of like real soundscapey tone heavy kind of band but they're really focused on kind of two guitars and drummer. Pump up the Valium, I know that um, I grew up in like a tiny country town and they just had a sanity in the whole town, the only single shop and there was like one aisle for punk and it's like the only city there that I kind of saw that I liked. It was so rad and I just remember thinking I can't play this fast, I guess I just started kind of playing more punk guitar and I tried really hard but I just couldn't play that fast. But it was really inspirational. Did you get it eventually? Yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Definitely not the lead, but um, 